Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, on this episode, Rachel and I are going to um, share with you guys some inspiring stories of some of our clients or people who we've come across, and uh, perhaps just expand on maybe the the the, the criteria that in, incites that uh, inspirational feeling uh, in us as trainers. You know what we sort of pick up on from other people that uh, we consider inspiring. Rach, why don't you start? Um, so for me, I I work with a, a lot of injured people. That that is my passion. It can go both ways. It can be really exhausting because I am very empathetic to people. So I have to really um, watch how much I take on. But then there's always that one story that um, will kind of stick with you forever. When I was first starting out, I had my own car accident and definitely had to recover from it. But then I got to work with this girl who... Now, any car accident is tragic. People are injured cars are ruined, people lose stuff, whatever. But it made me really put into thought really how much was I truly affected because I'm very lucky. I I have recovered very well from my injuries and I've come a a long way. Um, This person that I was working with, she she was driving uh, downtown London She had her window open because she was a smoker, so she was smoking a cigarette as she was driving, and a truck that was um, carrying gravel was driving by her, and a piece of rock fell out of the truck, and I'm not sure if it bounced off anything or whatnot. No, we're not talking about gravel. This is like... This is like large chunks of rock. Is It would have to be like a fair size. Like those decorative pieces for landscaping and Possibly, stuff Possibly, like yeah. And um, it hit her in the head. It caused brain damage. I forget how long she was in a coma. But what really got me... Like, when she actually told me her story, I cried. And I I actually apologized to her because I felt like it was very inappropriate for me to be crying. Um, but it was, it was one of those moments where it was a reality check on my end and to be very grateful for how much I have. But what really made me think that way was how positive she was. She um, she struggled with memory. Scheduling was very important. Um, like the time of day that she would come in, she needed so much time in the morning to get ready. We had to make sure that she was in a setting that there wasn't a lot of noise. So we had to try and pick like quieter times in the gym um, and just how positive she was and just how she really wanted to do her best to get better and to really um, move on, to not let this stop her and really to push forward. It was it was inspirational. And sometimes what seems big to us, you hear somebody else's story and it therefore becomes smaller. It doesn't necessarily disappear, but you reevaluate your situation and you you know that you don't want it to be a burden. Why would you let your own issues be a burden if someone can be um, resilient against their own? When you see that, it motivates you. And I think that for me, that was a big push in my personal recovery at the time. Um, Do you have another story? So I had a client who was an above the knee amputee. And, um, I think as a trainer, especially when you're working at like a gym or some other facility when you're working for someone else and and you find out either beforehand or or in that moment that no, no, normally you're told beforehand, but um, when you find out that you're going to be training someone who's an amputee and it's the first amputee you ever work with, you're like scared shitless because you don't really know what to expect. And I've never really been uh, someone to... Um, focus on people's differences in such a way that categorizes them. I, I t- 
tend to not really pick up on those things. Like I, I don't remember how it happened to her. I don't. Uh, uh, same thing with other people who ha- who have uh, differences uh, that things that differentiate them from other people. I just I don't really pick up on those. I just you know. Uh, when I'm if I'm the tra- if I'm their trainer I'm just I just want to know what I can do with them and let's do it and let's help them get through their day type thing um I don't really obsess about uh the things that separate them from me so <clears throat> yeah with her you know I just saw her as you know another client and and that's exactly the way that she portrayed herself I find that sometimes when people have issues that or have these burdens that could become an obstacle for them. Um, there's a lot of people who um, they really latch on to that as something that that categorizes them or differentiate them. For some reason, they want that categorization or they want that label because it make they feel like it makes them special, maybe. Um, but with this particular client, she didn't really uh, approach it that way. It was just like, yeah, I just don't have a leg there and I'm just going to do, you know, everything that uh, other people do. And, um, it's not really an issue and it never was. And there were multiple occasions where we completely trained without her prosthesis. We just didn't need it. Um, and so, yeah, she just had a great attitude. We would train like 6 AMs. Um, I think it was twice a week. And, uh, because she had such a great attitude and this is a, you know, a 40 something plus, uh, lady and you know I had her overhead pressing 40 pounds in each hand we were doing these crazy um, uh, balance circuits where I'd have her jump from BOSU to BOSU um, just to mix things up a little bit and from one leg she was jumping from BOSU to BOSU and and she loved that it was a lot of fun and uh, and and I enjoyed uh, uh, encouraging her to kind of push those limits a little bit and I think it could be easy for us to forget that when we're faced with an obstacle or, or a limiting obstacle, much like she had, that you adapt to it, or at least if you have the right attitude, you adapt to it. So to have her do those things that would normally see, seem even challenging to uh, someone with two legs was not all that challenging to her because she's adapted to having one leg. She's got very good balance, um, but it's because she wants to have good balance. Uh, she didn't let herself fall into that rut of letting her um, handicap define her. I think that's a, a very important concept is that, you know, these things that happen to you in life, uh, or at least these negative things, they they can't and they shouldn't define you. It's not the burden that you carry that defines you. It's, it's, it's how you carry it, right? So I just I just think that that's a good example of someone who approached their limitation the right way.